Warning, this is the most disturbing video I've ever made in my life. Viewer discretion advised. This video breaks no guidelines and follows all laws. On the show, I've talked about women being hypnotized into making terrible decisions by rock stars or infamous men before, but never have I seen a case as disgusting and disturbing as the Ian Watkins case. If you aren't much of a true crime person and don't listen to a lot of rock bands, Ian Watkins was the frontman of a mediocre popular rock band in the early 2000s and some of the 2010s, known as Lost Prophets. The band itself is pretty unnotable and bland, with 90% of their music catalog being completely destroyed by Ian Watkins' presence. Oddly enough, even without knowing what Ian Watkins did, the music is still pretty bad. I'd almost say worse than Blood on the Dance Floor, so it's puzzling to me as to why this band became so popular in the first place. The music videos of Lost Prophets are unwatchable considering Ian's presence feels gross and wrong. <sighs> I'll stop procrastinating the inevitable here. This is the case of Ian Watkins. Ian David Watkins, now aged 42 like I said, is the frontman of atrocious band Lost Prophets. He's easily one of the most egotistical and delusional rock stars I've ever seen, to the point where it almost looks like he embraces vanity in his mugshots. Unfortunately, his ego managed to get him in a position of power with Lost Profits, and he essentially used it over his years in the band to lure really, really young girls into committing atrocious sexual acts for him to fulfill his sick fantasies. What better way to lure a little girl into a place of vulnerability and desperation when you're a narcissistic, tatted-up rock star with a legion of fans who constantly give you validation? You probably hear all sorts of cases about these rock stars who take advantage of women. Well, I can assure you, if you've never heard of this case, let's just say this isn't for the faint-hearted. There are actually quite a few similarities between the case of Davi Vanity and Ian Watkins, which is why I decided to cover him since I just got done covering Davi. For one, both Davi and Ian Watkins are almost psychotically narcissistic and care only about their vanity and sexual drive. Two, they both look similarly. They both have layered hair, tattoos, and rebel personalities. They front similarly sized bands that sole purpose of creation almost seems to be to allow the singer to get close with little girls. Though the only difference between Davi Vanity and Ian Watkins is that Ian Watkins was punished for his crimes. So what makes the Ian Watkins case one of the most notable true crime cases to come out of the last few decades save for like Chris Watts? Well, let's start from the beginning. Ian Watkins, during his peak in Lost Profits, essentially met up with a 16-year-old girl after a concert in 2007. The two met up at a venue, and to the surprise of no one, the topic of virginity came up between the two of them, because why else would a 20-something-year-old rock star try to talk to a 16-year-old girl he isn't related to after a show? Then, Ian being the class act that he is, took this young girl into a hotel room, videotaped her pleasuring him, and then Ian proceeded to urinate on the young woman's face. It's unknown when exactly Ian committed his first offense against a minor or even just a woman, but this is one of the first documented cases I could find in his court files. In his court case, it was found that after 2007, he really started to amp up his degeneracy in ways no one could have fathomed. He eventually started talking to younger and younger women, all of them far under 18, some as young as 14. He started documenting a lot of these disgusting encounters he had with minors as time went on, and the contents of these documents just get worse and worse as time progresses. Eventually, he started convincing starstruck mothers into letting him do things to their 10-year-old little girls on camera, including but not limited to getting them high on cocaine, making them watch illicit material, and physically abusing them in ways I would never even want to mention. And eventually, after a while of this, he started grooming pregnant teenage moms into letting him abuse their newborns when they were delivered. This isn't even as far as the rabbit hole goes. At his home, he had hundreds of thousands of illicit and disgusting photos of him doing things to babies, getting literal babies high on crystal meth, making the moms do things to their baby for the camera, the list goes on. Ian couldn't even claim insanity for these heinous acts that are truly insane, as he was fully aware of what he had done and bragged about it frequently. And in texts to the young mothers he abused, he was very prideful and happy to suggest doing things to their newborns, even suggesting that newborns were only born for his pleasure, 
and that the mothers should sell their babies out to pimps and fat old men for a fee to profit off of the situation. I wish I was joking, but this is in the court documents. And when Ian was on tour and couldn't get to the mothers themselves in person, he'd have them just abuse their children on camera for his pleasure through Skype. He truly was just the worst person to ever come out of rock and roll. I haven't heard crimes this heinous in even the most horrific true crime investigations I've ever done. It was noted in court that he really, really enjoyed himself in the videos where he commits these crimes, making him a true deadite. Never underestimate how depraved or scary any certain celebrity might be behind the scenes. Now, all of the children that were harmed by Ian were immediately taken away from their mothers and placed in protective foster care. Well, protective could be argued considering foster care programs have infamously high rates of abuse in them nationwide. Anyway, Ian Watkins was sentenced to 35 years in prison, and isn't eligible for parole until at least 2036. But I gotta ask, why? Why would this guy want to be anywhere else in the world than a cozy, special sex offender prison unit made specifically for other creeps like himself? The second he steps outside of his house or goes into the city for any reason, he's going to get bombarded with assaults and harassments, considering his case is among one of the most shocking true crime cases of all time. You know, it's funny just how little support Ian Watkins gets, even from fanatics who fawn over Ted Bundy. I've never seen a case where quite literally every single person on Earth is just equally revolted by this man. Immediately after he was exposed, the name Ian Watkins brought forth a feeling of dread, anxiety, and general disgust to pretty much anyone who heard it. There are a very small few amount of women out there who do unfortunately support Ian and send him fan mail, but it's such an insignificant amount of people that it's not even really worth getting into. There was a woman shortly after Ian was convicted who after a few communications began getting groomed by Ian through mail. In their letters to one another, it became very apparent very quickly that Ian was interested in relations with the woman's child. Police were tipped off about the woman being in contact with him and her child was taken away from her. I think the worst part about Ian is just the sheer amount of damage he causes without any remorse. Even after his trial, where he got sentenced to 35 years in prison, he made jokes about it as if it was nothing at all referring to the situation as mega lols. I'm not joking. He also expressed an immense lack of remorse for his actions. As he said he wished to subject his infant victims to nothing but a life of filth, and that's in quotations, and that all his child victims will know is pain, suffering, filth, and how worthless they are. Ian's family has taken a surprising stance on the issue at hand here, stating that they don't completely disown their son for his actions which is understandable as it would be extremely hard to disown your own close family member regardless of their own illicit actions. However, his stepfather had mentioned comedically that he'd love to beat Ian Watkins around in a cell for hours. Personally, I don't necessarily understand why Ian felt the need to do what he did. Perhaps being able to have any woman you want numbs you after a while, to the point where you feel the need to take part in risky and downright repulsive behavior in order to feel anything at all. To some, feeling immense pain is better than feeling nothing at all. If anything can be learned from this situation, it's that idolizing musicians and famous people in general is a horrible idea. You never know the true agenda of someone who has an arsenal of vulnerable fans at their disposal. Unfortunately, Ian's decline into full-on degeneracy will never be fully understood, and that's just the cold hard truth. It was stated by his father that he was a happy young child and really had no issues at all until he started getting fame. Ian Watkins currently resides in Wakefield Prison in the UK, where he still has about 28 years left of his sentence. Though that might have extended to 29 years as he recently had 10 months added to his sentence due to the fact it was found he possessed a mobile phone on his person, which is strictly forbidden in any prison. He was using the phone to once again contact minors and vulnerable fans who wanted admiration from a rock star. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to tune in next week when I take a further look into the Davi Vanity case. Do you or someone you know have an interesting or shocking story of an interaction with a criminal or horrible person? Want to share it and potentially come on my show? Just email littledantetherat5 at gmail.com. Also consider joining my brand new Discord server, where you can discuss true crime in any form you wish with very little bots or restrictions.